<laughs> good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to uh, uh, Dumb uh, SEO Questions, episode 299. Each week, uh, we meet here to answer the questions asked on the SEO Questions community on Google+, and also the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, uh, we have Tim Kappa. Tim uh, uh, is CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. He's uh, based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. Um, he... Uh, He's proud to call himself uh, an SEO and he's also a Google top contributor uh, in the Google My Business community. David Rosam uh, is an SEO copywriter of 12 years standing, a copywriter for 30 odd years, and uh, he uh, um, is a, 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 an internet marketer based in the southern end of, of the UK. Michael Fisher Kirshner is uh, um, lives and works uh, around Silicon Valley. Uh, he's um, based on the uh, west coast of the USA. And um, I bet you're glad you're not near that hurricane, uh, Micah. Okay. M Micah uh, is head of SEO for Turn River Capital in, in the United States. Ashok Panda is... Uh, based um, in Germany. He's proud to call himself uh, an, an SEO. And uh, Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he's based in um, London. Um, and uh, he's uh, also a Google top contributor on the uh, Google AdSense community. All right, our, our first uh, question tonight uh, is um, from Nimi Gill. Um, Nimi said, I have a cat client blog page named Dog Care Blog, and this is the H1 for each post, and the title of the post is displaying as H2. I was always told that the post title should be H1. Um, is, is that correct? Um, I would think this would be duplicate. I mean, <clears throat> ideally, the post title should be H1. Um, it's not It's not that it absolutely has to be. Um, it's best if it's all very consistent. Um, so, for example, it's an H1 with the largest text on the page. It's above the fold. Like, it should imply that whatever the, the snippet is to imply the purpose of the page, that should be consistently all together. Um, it doesn't have to be perfectly consistent, but it generally makes things easier if it is. Um, so, ideally, yes. Does it have to be? No. Thank you, Maga. Anybody else have a comment on that? Okay. I agree. Um, I think what you know. I, I think the, 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 whether it's worth going through a whole site and um, and reworking it all, um, I'm not sure. Uh, depends how big the site is, uh, and also whether you can uh, um, lay it off on some. Uh, on the developers to to change uh, change the theme, perhaps. Um, it's you know at the same time on a bigger site, it's possibly causing more of a pain than a uh, than on a smaller site because you'll get a lot more duplication. Um, yes, um, the it's as long as the string is question i personally um i would fix it um i still think there's enough um enough value to to do these things properly rather than improperly but i'm not going to say it's going to be um a make or break situation for the ranking of that uh, um uh, of that page so do it if you can don't 
don't give up if you uh, don't give up on the site if you can't. Excellent, thank you, mate. And uh, I draw your attention also to uh, Michael Martinez. Um, uh, he um, gave a, an extensive answer on the uh, Facebook group, uh, Damasio Questions. And we thank Michael and all of the other people who uh, answer questions um, throughout the week as soon as they're uh, lodged on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. All right, let's um, move on to number two on our run list. Um, this one from Anch Gajural, Gajral, I guess. Um, uh, Google Search Console um, uh, has a 404 report uh, reporting links that, that uh, don't exist on my website. Um, and she said, uh, hey, SEO experts. Very perceptive bloke, um, Ansh. Anyway, he said, that I've seen a lot of soft 404 error pages in my Google Search Console account that don't exist on my website. Uh, these error pages are created uh, um, like porn URLs. Um, I think he's saying that they probably re are referred from porn, porn URLs. Can anyone help or, and have the experience to resolve it? um this sounds like whatever set of urls that you have is likely due to say search pages being um indexable um or and basically your four four like potential pages being indexable um it depends on if this is increasing. So yeah, if, if this is like old stuff and there's nothing really new, you can just ignore them. Um, where I get worried is if there's an increasing number of 404 pages, and then you might want to double check to see what's generating them. Usually um, what's nice is that in, in Search Console, there's a, a tool to um, go in and check the links that go to that page. And so you can go and if there are links, it's that or the XML site map. Um, you can go in and take a look and see what, what is potentially generating Google being able to find those pages. Um, and so if you can go in, find that, you can then potentially resolve the issue uh, if it's continually on an increase. But if there's small numbers and it's consistent, then eh, not, not, not a huge thing to worry about at all. Thank you, Micah. Any other comments? Um, if it's 404, then I wouldn't worry. But if it's soft 404s, then that indicates that the URL is responding with 200 rather than 404. So that would worry me. I, that, well, I, it wouldn't worry me too much, but it would mean that the setup is somewhat, um, what would be the right word, um, wonky um, in that you know, if the URL doesn't exist, the server should be responding with a 404 rather than a soft 404, which indicates it's 200. And then you're probably showing the error page. So that would be what would concern me. Yeah. I see. Also, um, by the way, any other comments before we move on to the next? Okay, I also thank John Mueller, um, who uh, uh, responded um, on the SEO questions uh, Facebook, no, sorry, SEO questions Google Plus uh, community. All right, um, we're just about to tick over 39,000 um, members of, of, of that community. Yeah, not bad. All right, let's go to the next. This one from Vincent Chan. Do I really need to build backlinks? Yes. <laughs> um, how do I build the backlinks for my site? Is it really important for my site rank? 
Uh, look, it depends what you're doing, Vin Vincent, but no, you don't need to build backlinks. Um, if you look at a link from what it actually is, not for what you think you know it is or what you've read about link juice and equity and page rank and blah, 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 and all that other stuff, the simple the simple fact of a link is when somebody finds something of value, of interest, um, and adds a link to that piece of content from somewhere else, whether it be another website, another page, another article that's been written, whether it's in a newspaper article uh, online, whether it's from a social share, Essentially, you've provided something of value that somebody wanted to include or reference to their readers to go and have a look at. That, that's the holistic viewpoint of it. And if you look at it in that sense, then you need to, if you're going to maintain these naturally or um, not maintain, if you're going to acquire these naturally, you need to provide something of value that people want to reference or share. So that could be great video. It could be really great uh, guides. I don't know. Let's say you make pink fluffy kites. You make, um, you know, you provide really good guides on how to fly pink fluffy kites. Uh, and your guides are brilliant. And it includes how to do tricks with them. And, um uh, you know, and uh, maybe even do choreographed kite flying and, and all this kind of stuff. And you video it and it goes into your tutorials. That's great content. And anyone else that wants to learn how to fly a pink fluffy kite, <laughs> um, then essentially they're going to share that content. So, Getting back to your thing, do I really need to build backlinks? No, you don't. Your content um, and depends how you reach and engage with the intended target and audience. Uh, those are the ones that would create the links for you because you, you create the content for them. You engage with the users. You provide meaningful resources to them. And then they, in turn, reciprocate by sharing that resource elsewhere. So do you need to build links? No, but you do need to work at providing something of value to be shared, thus providing the natural links back to you. Thank you, Tim. All right, um, anybody else on that? All right, let's um, move on to the next. Anoop Kenyan. Um, it's titled Most Keywords Dropped Almost 20 Places. Uh, Anoop said, um, was, was there an update uh, in the last two days? Most, key, most of my keywords uh, dropped almost 20 places. Um, was there an update in the last two days? Oh, he just repeated himself. Okay. All right. Um, have at it, please. Um, I don't know if there was an update, but um, Dijan, Dijan's uh, volatility tracker thing uh, said there was. Um, I use SEMrush, SEMrush volatility through a lot of mine all over the place, or some of them, not all of them. What was it, essentially? Uh, uh, don't know, but yes, yeah, something something did happen, and nine times out of ten, Google will say this is just a regular update, part of their blah blah blah, whatever, you know. Yeah. All right. So thank you, Tim. Uh, any others? Okay. 
We're powering through these. Uh, our next uh, is from Cassie Richardson. It's titled Subpages Navigation Links. Uh, Cassie said, I have a client who is considering get, getting rid of a, a slash shows landing page and redirecting it, redirecting it to slash shows slash headliners. I think headliners would be the people uh, performing at the show, would that be sort of like uh, um, Hot Tub slash Tim Kappa, something like that? Um, and anyway, uh, the people thought that the uh, slash shows page is useless and uh, Cassie agrees. Um, the headliners page has the outbound links as the shows page meaning users and crawlers can still navigate to all the subpages of slash shows. There is a handy sidebar nav on the left-hand side. Any links uh, pointing to slash shows uh, uh, will redirect to slash shows slash headliners. The client wants to know of any potential detriment to SEO performance because the slash shows page was part of the URL structure. It would be like removing um, a slash services landing page and redirecting uh, traffic to the top service page, slash service, slash service one. If the top service page has navigable links to all other services and isn't lacking in content. Uh, oh, wait, here's one. There was one thing to add, let's see. Okay, so um, <laughs> the if okay upon that like generally I try to avoid uh, making redirects when possible. Now, uh, if there's a change in the situation, you're going to be moving everything to a new URL. Um, yeah, making sure you're through on redirect. You'd also want to update the links in the main nav as well. Um, I don't think it would make a really a, uh, a big difference in terms of impact of the change you're making. Um, but you just need to make sure that everything else is still consistent again. Um, if you're suddenly taken out of the main nav, then um, you know, you're, you're basically saying that, hey, this is not as important anymore. And so that page would implicitly be uh, impacted. Um, is, but if you're you're just shifting into kind of a new structure, better uh, to give a better understanding of what the page really is about, then as long as everything else is is going to be the same, again, redirects, updating the actual links, they're not having to uh, go th like go through a redirect uh, through your own site, then you should be fine. Um, of course, if the content does dramatically change and you're trying to go for a set of keywords, um, then that that may actually uh, shift kind of the type of pages you rank for, and that's a different story. But just kind of a, a URL change in of itself um, shouldn't make a huge difference. Thank you, Micah. Okay, anybody else? All right. I'll try and be more interesting, Tim. Uh, Jason Haiyang Chul Kang asked the question, how would you define a successful SEO campaign? <laughs> well, yeah, it, it depends on what... No, go ahead, Ashok. Yeah, I was saying it completely depends what exactly is the goal, what exactly if the person wants more leads or wants more web presence. For example, if there is a news or media website which wants a more web presence, they do not want leads. So success for them is completely different, selling local services. That's what I want to say. Thank you, Asha. Anybody else? Yeah. I'd, I'd agree with that and essentially say whatever the goal is, succeeding in that goal. Um, that that's that's gonna vary depending on the campaign. So
Yeah, yeah I see Travis Bailey, um, um, and David Kircher, uh, who we thank for his answers uh, on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, and Travis Bailey said, that when the check clears, um, that would be a sign of success. Anyway, let's move to the next. All right, this one from Surav Kumar. It's titled Ranking Drops After Restructuring a Website. Um, he doesn't say when the the broad the, the the broad core update occurred, whether it was recently or, or earlier in the year. But he said uh, after the broad core update, my company project website uh, um, dropped in ranking. Um, what should I do for that? And two, uh, what type of uh, data collection? Uh, um, for my competitor's website, who is ranking in Google? I suppose the basic thing to ask is, uh, were all of the um, URLs preserved or redirected to new URLs um, um, with the... Uh, Oh, no, no, he's talking about after broad call. That was just a, a basically a um, um, just moving the, the deck chairs on the Titanic, wasn't it? Yeah, it was just a update of the core alga. There were some, uh, I mean, Without even looking at the site, without, you know, there's just way too much to guess. There were reports of uh, medical health uh, pharmaceutical industry taking a bit more of a knock than they usually did. Um, in the last update, um, there were some switches uh, especially in local, not really the actual organic positioning, but the um, but the uh, local search results, the map pack. Th there were there were changes in that, um, but that's a completely different thing. Um, why? Oh, you know, it it could, it could be tons of it. Um, thin content, bad content. Uh, yeah, without looking, there's just millions of potential reasons. Thank, thank you, Tim. All right, let's um, move on. JL Favario, uh, um, it's titled Set and Forget SEO. I don't know if that's uh, possible, but uh, she said, he said, um, are there any at all uh, SEO tasks um, that you are able to set and forget for any amount of time? Yeah, you can actually set up the Google Webmaster Tools link to Google Analytics and forget. Uh, yeah, I mean, also, if you've got, um, you know, I don't know, if you've got a page that sells pink fluffy elephants, well, that title is going to remain pink fluffy elephants for sale or, you know, buy the best pink fluffy elephants. Uh, as long as you don't change the page and the URL and your title should be cool. <laughs> Okay. As for as for long time things, I uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not really, you know, thing, things change, um, and depending on what you know, new products coming in, how they fit within the structure. Yeah, it's there's nothing really, um, but you know, in theory, if you don't touch a page or a category or a particular section in the site. Uh, then those should be okay. 
um, for a while until something else changes on the site and you need to re revisit the structure and, 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 and flow and whatever else. But in theory, yeah, set and forget, not forever. No, unfortunately not. Um, uh, yeah, it's not really there. Excellent. Yeah, I think there are there are some set and forget things, um, especially when you're you're in a, a case of a new site. Um, you know, you go through all the the technical stuff and make sure that it's done correctly. Um, it's not something you come along and do later. And it's you know, once you've got your URL structures set up, once you've uh, um, once you've verified that the uh, uh, that the page structures are uh, are worthwhile, um, you basically leave them until something big happens or it's time to um, to redesign the site. Um, you know, the, there's a whole load of things you do right at the beginning, or at least there's a whole load of things I do right at the beginning. Um, so I'm yes, set up the HR. Yeah, one can set up the hair plan tag and then schema markup, all the tools like Google Analytics and uh, redirects. Those things do not need may, much changes. Hmm. But as far as content is concerned, you need to do continuous changes. So at least add more value, more content. But the, the question isn't about specifically about content. It just says SEO tasks. Yes, you're right, right. That's right. Um, so, yes, you know, get as much straight and right at the beginning before launch, and hopefully, don't go near them. You can spend your time on on contents and strategy after that. Thank you, David. Thank you, Ashok. Thank you. Okay, let's go to the next one. It's number nine on our run list from Rami Moskovic. Rami said uh, it's, it's titled Monthly Inbound Links. He said, hi, how do you determine how many inbound links should you build for a certain website per month? Um, I don't determine it because I don't build monthly inbound links. What Tim said as well, yes. I don't have a target for inbound links. Actually, post rank brain release, it's not much about links uh, because for rank brain algorithm, um, for different kind, like let's say one user is in a city, is in the city center, and the other user is just two hundred meters away. For the same search keywords, they can see different results. So if inbound links were that important, this will not happen. So rank brain completely changes the game. Certainly they're not that important. Maybe a very high authority um, PR uh, campaign can help once in a while. Let's say if you are doing two high PR backlinks a month, that should be sufficient. But not uh, you do not have to do 50 backlinks, 100 backlinks. That's a waste of time. Yeah. I'd like to thank you also Ma Michael Martinez and George G for their answers. Uh, George G was with us last week. Couldn't make it this week, but we'll be back next week. Um, talking just... Talking about links and, 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 and what Ashok was saying. I don't know if anyone ever caught, I did retweet it when I caught the, uh, I did retweet. Um, someone was someone was talking about how many edu links or something should I be building or something like this. And John, John Miller actually caught that and, uh, uh, and replied. And I retweeted his reply, I think it was last week or maybe the week before. 
and he basically said um yeah everybody seems to think that edu links are brilliant um and they've just become spam magnets and therefore we pretty much ignore almost every link coming out of them now absolutely so I agree with that um, the, the the point here is is you know if you're going to be chasing these things you don't know yeah yeah i just wouldn't chase links man it's just yeah i wouldn't I agree completely agree i agree with that uh, but see the the issue is let's say if some website is very new like they just launched the, they just bought the domain just bought the uh, like uh, launched the website maybe a little amount like they do a pr campaign or get a news link and paste from a news or magazine which has high authority link maybe hoppington post something like that that helps getting at least from the uh, one or two page authority to 15 or 20 then afterwards it's completely up to the user experience how much cta or how much uh, how less is the bounce rate automatically that boosts uh, and yeah if you are good people will automatically link to you you do not have to do it thank you ashok thank you tim thank you david all right um anybody else before we move on okay oh it's that time again it's thank you for watching 